Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis, support.greatdetectives.net. Thank you to R.A., and Patricia for supporting the program that way. You can also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go to patreon.greatdetectives.net. And I want to go ahead and thank our latest Patreon supporters. Uh, thank you to Rachel and William uh, coming on at, uh, to support the podcast at the Detective Sergeant level of $7.14 per month or more, and I want to thank Larry for supporting the program at the Shamus level of $4 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support. We've had a nice uh, growth in number of Patreon supporters this July, which is a surprise since uh, July is not usually a, a good month for Patreon signups, but we are over 275 at this point, so getting close to that uh, 300 mark. Again, thank you so much to everyone who supports us on Patreon. And now it is time for this week's episode of Dangerous Assignment. The original air date, April the 28th, 1951, and the title is The Outlaw Radio Station. <laughs> Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though. Trouble, but... When I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize that this assignment's going to wind up with my getting shot at just for trying to turn off a radio program. Morning, Commissioner. Ruth said you had an assignment for me. I do, Steve. Ever thought of getting into radio? Oh, me? I should say not. Why, you holding auditions or something? I want you to get into the business just long enough to get somebody else out of it. Oh. I'm not sure. Now, look. You look, Steve, at this map of the Balkan area. This country here. That's about the only friendly country left in that area, isn't it? At the rate things are going, it may not be friendly for much longer. Oh? Steve, there's an outlaw broadcasting station somewhere in that country. The man who's doing the broadcasting is filling the air with a choice assortment of lies and propaganda. What about? About our country and theirs. The result has been to put a strain on our relations with them and to set up internal tensions over there which are, in effect, tearing the country apart. Is there by any chance an election coming up over there soon? Yes. Steve, we know who's behind this broadcaster, all right. But what we've got to do is to stop him. Well, it seems to me that this is a matter for the Balkan country to handle. What's it got to do with us? We think the broadcasting is being done by an American. What? The government over there has asked our cooperation. I see. Obviously, they haven't been able to locate this broadcasting station, eh? No, it's undoubtedly a mobile one. Look, I wonder if maybe an old trick isn't being used. What do you mean? Well, making it sound like the broadcast is coming from a certain country when actually it's across the border in another country. No, they've assured me that the broadcast is actually originating from inside the country, Steve. Uh -huh. The items which the broadcaster comments on sometimes are so recent that he'd have to be inside the country to know about them. I see. Well, whom do I work with over there? A man named Prebo, one of their intelligence agents. He's waiting for you in their capital right now. Now, Steve, get over there. Work with Prebo. Locate this outlaw broadcaster and put him out of business once and for all. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. National Broadcasting Company is presenting Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy in the role of Steve Mitchell, colorful, two-fisted government agent. At all those places of the world where danger and intrigue walk hand in hand, there you will find Steve Mitchell on another Dangerous Assignment. <laughs> Sure, 
I've got my assignment. Just a little matter of dropping into a Balkan country and finding an outlaw broadcaster nobody's been able to locate so far and then putting him out of business. And I don't doubt that somewhere along the line I'll run up against somebody who'll be trying to do likewise to me. It's Friday evening when my plane lands in the capital and I head for their intelligence office and Agent Prebo. He takes me into the radio room where a little gent is sitting by a receiver. Uh, this is Kovac. Head of our radio division, Mr. Mitchell. Kovac? I am honored, Mr. Mitchell. You uh, expecting this outlaw broadcaster to come on the air tonight, Prevo? Yes, in but a few minutes. As you see, we have a radio direction finder here. I also have one 30 miles northwest of here and a third one 20 miles to the east. That way you can get a fix on him, huh, Kovac? Yes. Unfortunately, this procedure has done us no good in the past. Each time we race to the position Kovac and his men have plotted on the map. Yeah? No. What do you mean? Nobody is there when we arrive. Ah, he must have his transmitter mounted in a car or a truck. Any idea who the guy is? Well, our language experts tell us he is a Native American, probably from your Middle West. That uh, list I gave you, Prebo, the one listing American expatriates. Oh, yes. Here it is, Mitchell. I've studied it over and found three names which also appear on a list of tourist visas which have been granted during the past six months. So, we know those three men have been in this country recently. Okay, who are they? The first one is a William Teal. Teal. Let's see what I've got on his background. Here we are. William Teal, ex-newspaper political writer with a criminal record in the States, wanted for extortion, illegal possession of firearms, violation of narcotics act. <laughs> you know, this sounds like a real sweet kid. Who's next on your list? A Carl Fenton. Fenton. Yeah. Former professor. Great cause joiner, the save the world type, I guess. Who's the third? Arnold Quist. I don't even have to look him up. He's been in our hair for years. How do you mean? Professional agitator. Makes his living that way, I guess. Always trying to get himself arrested so he can be a big, fat martyr. Mm, I see. So our boy could be one of those three. Teal, Fenton, Quist. Good evening, my long-suffering and much-oppressed friends. There he is, Prebo. This is the voice of truth. I'll bet. Well, let's take a look at the day's news. See, Kovac is receiving now, reports from the other direction finders the over his United earphones. Nations. He's plotting their lines uh, on the map. I should say the disunited nations are blundering along under the control of old Uncle Moneybags, who... There. You get his position already, Kovac? Yes. As you see, I have added my own line to the map and plotted the fix. Here you are. Okay, let's go, Prebo. <laughs> We should almost be there, Mitchell. According to the map, the broadcast came from this field we are approaching. I see lights on the other side of the field, Prebo. Yes, our other units are approaching along the other road. We will have the field completely surrounded. Good. Brace yourself. I'm going to turn off the road now. Okay. Here. I'll sweep the field with the spotlight and... Hey, stop the car, Prebo. Uh, empty. The whole field is empty. Well, I'll be. Ah, no cover for anyone to hide in, either. This is what happens to us every time, Mitchell. Eh, this guy must be part gopher. Okay, might as well get back to headquarters. What time is it, Mitchell? Ten minutes to midnight. You say this gent has another broadcast right at midnight? Usually... Well, we might as well try again. Kovac's still on duty? Yes. See, he and his daughter are waiting for us in front of the building. What luck did you have, Prebo? The usual, Kovac. Not a trace of him. Mm, I do not understand it. Nor do I. Uh, oh, I do not believe Mitchell has met your daughter. I beg your pardon. This is Anna, Mr. Mitchell. Hello, Anna. I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Mitchell. I hope you will be able to help locate this outlaw broadcaster. He's certainly causing a lot of trouble for us all. Yeah, Kovac, you'd be able to tell if he was broadcasting from a plane, wouldn't you? Oh, yes. Our radar stations would pick up the plane at once. Well, let us go up to headquarters, hmm? Are you uh, coming with us, Kovac? I will be up in time for the next broadcast. Very well. After you, Mitchell. Thanks. Let's see. What floor is that again? Eight, the top button. Okay. You know... This must be getting pretty monotonous for you, Prebo, chasing after this guy and winding up with a handful of air each time. Yes, I'd like very much to get my hands on him. He's doing the cause of democracy in my country a great deal of harm. 
course, I am certain our neighbors across the border to the east are enjoying the whole affair hugely. I don't doubt it. Hey, what's the matter with the elevator? It quit. But we are only halfway up to the top. Halfway between the fourth and fifth floor, to be exact. I'll try the button. Mm -hmm. Nothing. This is the emergency signal button here, huh? Yes. I'll try that. Dead. All the power must be off. Well, let's see if we can bring any help. Hey, anybody around? I don't know if that will help or not, Mitchell. Huh? At this hour of the night, the building is deserted except for the night watchman, and there is no telling which section of the building he might be in. Well, you got any better ideas? No. Well, then oil up your tonsils and join me. Maybe we can raise... What's the matter? Listen. Hear anything? Yes. What is it? I don't know. I'm trying to peg it. Sort of a rasping metallic sound, and it's coming from somewhere above us in the elevator shaft by the sound of it. Yes. Strange. The elevator cage is vibrating slightly. Yeah. Hey, wait. What is it? If I can climb up the side of the cage a little. There. What are you doing? Uh, wedge shut. Oh, fine. Look, Brevo. Somehow we've got to get this trap door on top of the cage open before it's too late. Too late? What do you mean? I just figured out what that sound over us is. It's a hacksaw. Uh-huh. Yes, you are right. Mitchell. Somebody is trying to saw the elevator cable in two. That's right, Prevo. If we don't figure a way out of this rat trap fast, we'll be taking a one-way trip to the basement. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Just listen to the stars on tomorrow's broadcast of The Big Show. Jimmy Durante, Milton Berle, Gordon McRae, Ethel Merman... Rosemary Clooney, and Frank Lovejoy, plus Meredith Wilson's Big Show Orchestra and Chorus. And your MC on the Big Show is the glamorous and unpredictable Tallulah Bankhead. And on Theater Guild on the Air tomorrow, you'll hear a one-hour adaptation of the comedy The Man in Possession, starring Rex Harrison and Lily Palmer. Back to Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. The trapdoor, is it moving any? No, still stuck tight. I'll have to think of something else. Well, perhaps if we were... Just a minute, I think I got it. Mitchell, what are you doing? It looks as if you're trying to hang from the side of the cage by your hands, upside down. That's just what I am doing. If I can hold on, maybe I can do some good with my feet. Here, I'll have to support your shoulders. Okay. Now. Not yet. It's coming. There. Mitchell, you forced it open. Yeah, here. Let me down. Yeah. Mitchell, <laughs> I can see a figure up there sawing at the cable. Wait. Now he's looking down at us. Got your gun? Yes, right here. Did you get him? I don't know. He dove out of sight. Hey, the cage sagged a little just then. Come on. I'll pull you up after me. Okay. Give me a hand. Very well. Up you come. Look, we can climb onto the fifth floor landing from here on top of the cage. Wait, I'll slide the doors open. There. Mitchell, the cable, it's starting to give way. Dive for the landing. There. There goes the cage. pound down the stairs, but our boy has done a one-flight lead on us. By the time we get to the ground floor, he's nowhere in sight. Kovac and his daughter, Anna, are still standing in front of the building. Kovac! Kovac! Did a man come out of the building? Yes, but a few seconds ago. There he is, just rounding the corner. Oh, oh, father, he shot you. You're bleeding. Oh, he darted out of sight around the corner, Mitchell. Hurry! When we get around the corner of the building, the guy's gone. We search the area, but he's done a good job of dropping out of sight. Finally, we get back to Kovac and Anna in front of the building. She's dabbing at his sleeve with her handkerchief. There. I think the bleeding is almost stopped now, Father. You see, Anna? It was not as bad as we thought. Oh, Oh, you were very fortunate, Kovac. It's only a nick in the forearm. Yes. Come, we had better go upstairs, gentlemen. The outlaw broadcast will be starting any minute, and we must be ready to start tracking. I'll arrange a relief for you, Kovac. Why? 
I am perfectly capable of handling it, Primo. Yes, but your arm... A, a scratch, nothing more. Well, even so, maybe you better let your daughter take you home and sort of... I insist on being allowed to perform my duties. But, well, okay, Kovac, sure. Kovac's daughter, Anna, starts to leave, and while he's saying goodbye to her, I take Primo off to one side and try out a wild idea on him. Only, all of a sudden, he doesn't think it's so wild. Then... Kovac joins us again, and we head upstairs to the intelligence headquarters. Pretty soon, the outlaw broadcaster comes on the air, and Kovac starts tracking. He gets the other two reports over his earphones and draws the lines. Then he flips off the receiver and hands Prebo a map. Here you are, Prebo. This is where you got him plotted, huh? Yes. Right there where the three lines intersect. If you hurry, perhaps this time he'll not get away. Yeah. But why do you not get started? He... You may escape again if you delay. That's right, Kovac. I, I do, do not understand. Pribo, what is the meaning of this? Why do you and Mitchell just stand there and look at me like that? Your boy ought to be finished by now, Pribo. Huh? Yes, he is in the next room. Uh, uh, here he is now. You have the position plotted on your map? Yes, sir. Here you are. What is this all about? That's what we'd like to know, Kovac. Uh -huh. As you see, Mitchell, there is quite a discrepancy in the two locations. You, you had another man plot the broadcast? And located on the map. It is quite a distance away from the location you gave us. Uh, th this other location is wrong. Look, Kovac, quit stalling. I figured you were a little too eager to stay on duty a few minutes ago, and it started me thinking... One very good reason for not finding this broadcaster is that you've been plotting the location wrong on purpose. No. It is useless, Kovac. I have the proof right here in my hand. Why have you been doing it, Kovac? According to Prevo, you've always been a pretty loyal citizen. Yes. It is true. I have been giving false locations, but I had no choice. You, you must believe me, I had no choice. What do you mean? My son. Your son? But our language experts assured us the broadcaster is in America. Oh, no, no, you do not understand. The country across the border from here, they are the ones who are behind this broadcaster. What's that got to do with it? My son lives in that country. He's a shopkeeper. When this broadcasting first started, agents from that country visited me secretly and told me they would kill my son unless I agreed to help them. I, I had no choice. So you've been giving phony locations right from the start, huh? Yes. But now we have a correct position on him for the first time. Come, Mitchell. Perhaps our hunting luck is due to improve at last. Reed, when I head for the location, this other man had plotted for us. It's a sort of a square or plaza near the edge of the city. We get there, stop the car, get out and take a good look around. Well, that van is nowhere inside. It sure isn't. Mitchell, I do not understand it. This time we are certain we had the right location. He must have gotten some kind of a warning. But how? I don't know, unless... Hey, wait. Hmm? There's your answer, Prebo. Uh. Look in that little shop with her back to us. Come on. What? Why, that is Kovac's daughter, Anna. Yeah. Mitchell, she sees us now. Just hold it where you are, Anna. Why, it is Mr. Mitchell and Prebo. Yeah, big surprise meeting us here, isn't it? But of course, I... Save it, Anna. You tipped off the broadcaster that we were on our way here, didn't you? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Your father has already confessed to his part in this, Anna. He, he confessed? Why did you warn the broadcaster? When father was wounded, he was afraid he would not be able to do the plotting on the map. So he told me to come here to the square and warn the man who does the broadcasting. I, I was afraid of what they would do to my brother if this man was caught. Well, you've really been a big help to us, Anna. By now, the gent we're after has probably slipped across the border. If he continues his broadcasting from that country, we will be powerless to stop him. I, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Mitchell. Oh, that fixes everything. If there is anything I can do to make amends... You uh, got a look at this guy, didn't you? Yes, of course. Here, I've got three pictures. Here, take a look, see if you recognize any of them. All right. No. No. Oh, yes. Yes, this is the man. William Teal. Hmm. He's the one with the criminal record. Yeah, but that doesn't help if we can't lay our hands on him. Perhaps you can. Huh? I can arrange for you to slip across the border. Across the border? Yes. And then you would be on your own. Surely they would not know where you got your information. That way my brother would not be in danger. And perhaps that would make up for what father and I felt we had to do. 
Okay, that's a deal. Mitchell, I strongly advise you think this over. I just did. I will make all the arrangements, Mr. Mitchell. In one hour, the person who is to take you across the border will pick you up at this corner in an automobile. Okay, Anna, I'll be here. Mr. Mitchell, eh? We know that Anna has not been trustworthy in the past. How do you know you can trust her now? I don't. But I'll find out in about an hour. Rebo leaves, still shaking his head, and I wait out the hour. Right on the dot, a car swings around the corner and pulls into the curb. The door opens, and I hop aboard. Okay, let's... Hey, Anna. Yes, Steve. You mean you're the one who's going to take me across the border? Yes, we will drive to a deserted stretch of the border, hide the car, cross on foot, and then make our way to the city where my brother's shop is. Why didn't you tell us an hour ago that you were going to be my guide? I knew Prebo did not trust me. I see. Steve, you trust me, don't you? I'll let you know a little later, Anna. We are almost at the border, Steve. You said this was a deserted stretch. You weren't kidding, Anna. See, here is the barbed wire fence. Yeah, we didn't make it here any too soon. Be light in an hour, looks like. Okay, I'll hold the strands apart while you... What is it? Quiet. Listen. Somebody coming. Wait. It's their border patrol. Quick. Over in these bushes. There. This ought to screen us. Looks like this stretch of the border wasn't so deserted after all. I don't understand it, Steve. There are usually no patrols at all here. Quiet. Here they come. Hey, watch it. Close. You're telling me. What an unlucky accident, my breaking the twig when I did. You're sure it was an accident? Well, of course. What do you mean? Let it go for now. Come on. They're out of hearing now. Let's go. We crawl through the fence and take the back roads to the city. It's a few minutes past noon when we get to the shop of Anna's brother, a gent named Boris. He hustles us into the back room and Anna fills him in on the deal. So, this explains why I have been watched and spied upon constantly these last few months. I've been a virtual prisoner and did not know it. Yes. If Father had helped Prebo track down this outlaw broadcaster, this William Teal, you would have been killed, Boris. And now you say that uh, Teal is back in this country? Yeah. Yeah. Mind if I use your radio there? Of course not. You think Teal will continue his broadcast? We'll soon find out. If he runs through the schedule, he should be on the air right now. Good afternoon, my oppressed friend. There he is. Yeah. This is the voice of truth. I am still in your midst. In spite of any lies you may hear that I have been driven from your country, I will never leave you until my words of truth have... But, Steve, I don't understand. I know that he'll cross the border. Sure he did, but he's trying to make it sound like he's still in your country. He's probably broadcasting from the radio station right here in this city. You know where it is, Boris? Yes, come. I will take you there. There is the radio station just ahead. But, Steve, look, in huh? the alley, that moving van parked there. Yeah, that the truck deal was broadcasting from across the border? Yes. And he must be here, all right. Okay, pull up in front of the building. In front? Yeah, yeah, right here. Very well, but you surely are not going to walk in the front door. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Steve, have you gone crazy? There are guards at the front entrance. How are you going to get in? With this. Some folded sheets of paper? I don't understand. Look. If you saw somebody walk into a radio station with these in his hand, what would you think they'd look like? Why, uh, a radio script, I suppose. That's right. You are going to pretend you are working here? I'm going to make like I own the joint. You two pull around into the alley. Boris, see if you can get that truck started. I'll meet you out there in about five minutes, I hope. Ever stick your head into a lion's mouth? That's just how I feel as I saunter casually up to the front entrance with my script under my arm, but the gag works. The guards ignore me. Inside, I start down the hall trying to act like I know where I'm going and just hoping I don't open the wrong door and end up in the broom closet. Then I spot a row of studios at the end of the hall, each with a glass window inside the third one, 
I spot Teal. Just signing off, I wait until he comes out into the hall, and then I ease up to him. Uh, what? Start walking, Teal. What, what is this? Who are you? My name's Mitchell. I've come a long way to pick you up, all the way from the States. The States? <laughs> And you're going to pick me up, huh? That's the general idea. We're going out the side door. Oh, are we? Well, suppose I don't want to. This gun in my pocket says you will. Uh, look, you, you can't get away with this, Mitchell. It's worth a try, Teal. Where do you think you're going to take me? Back to the States, eventually. Little matter of treason, to say nothing of a criminal record. You're out of your mind if you think you can get me back to the States. I'm among friends here. They'll never sign any extradition papers. I know. But the country across the border will. They've been trying to get you out of their hair for months. But I'm not there now. I'm safe here. That's funny. I'd have sworn I heard you say in your broadcast just a few minutes ago that you were still in that other country. Well, now, now look, Mitchell, if you think you're going to pull anything like that on me, you... That's just what I do think. Now move. Well, you... Where are we going? Out that side door. Well, then what? I'll let you know as soon as I figure it out. Open the door. Steve, over here. Okay. Good. Inside, Steele. Steve, watch out. A guard behind you. Guard, help! I've got him. Now, get in, Teal. All right. Okay, you drive, Teal. Boris, you and Anna stay in the back, out of sight. But right. why do we take this moving van, Steve? We would be conspicuous. If we can get to the border before they figure out where we're heading, we've got a chance. Okay, Teal, step on it. <laughs> That's the border up ahead, Mitchell. That bridge across the river. This is the spot where you crossed into the other country before? Yes, that's right. I understand now, Steve. You're going to pretend that you and Teal are crossing the border to do some more broadcasting. That's right. You and Boris stay out of sight back there. All right. And Teal, I'm still holding that gun on you in my pocket. All right. They're waiting us to stop at this end of the bridge. Okay. Huh. Looks like they've got this end of the bridge pretty well boarded up. Oh, it's just a gate. Who's that guy walking towards us? That's the captain of the guards. The other side of the river is across the border, huh? Yeah. Okay. As soon as the guard's through with us, just take the van across nice and easy and just don't try to get tricky with him. Well, well, it is Mr. Thiel. Hello, Captain. It has been a long time since I've seen you, uh, and I do not believe I have met your friend. I'm uh, Thiel's new assistant. I see. But uh, what are you doing here, Mr. Thiel? Well, we, we want to get across the border and do some more broadcasting. But surely you are joking. What do you mean? Well, Mr. Teal, you know that the border is closed at this bridge. Oh, pretty forgetful of you, wasn't it, Teal? Well, I... Captain... Wait. Guard running out of the shack towards us. Must have gotten a phone message. Wait, what is this all about? Sorry, Captain, we're leaving. Step on the gas, Teal. We're going to crash that barricade no, on the bridge. No, I, I won't do it. Okay, I will. Oh, my foot! Boris, Anna, brace yourself. Oh, no, no, no. Just keep going to the other end of the bridge. Teal, get your foot off the brake. No, no, I'm getting out. Teal. Steve, he's diving into the river. Morris, get this truck across the bridge. I'm going after Teal. I get the water at the feet from Teal, who's trying to swim back to his pals. I grab him. Try to maneuver him to the other side. The bullets start topping in the water all around him. I dive under. I grab his legs and pull him down with me. I wait until he's hard up for breath, and then I release him suddenly. We both surface fast, and just as he's gasping for air, I let him have it. He conks out, and I drag him under the bridge with me out of range of the border guards. I work him across to the other bank where Boris and Anna are waiting for me. Oh, Steve. Steve, are you all right? Yeah, here. I will help you with Teal. Just set him down on the bank while I get my wind. Oh, Brother, I sure hate to do that every day. Well, we are all safe now, Steve. Uh, all except Teal. He will not be doing any more broadcasting, huh? That's right. You might say there's no future for him in radio. Matter of fact, there's no future for him, period. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. There's mystery tomorrow with two exciting crime fighters, the Falcon and the Saint, 
The Falcon brings you two-fisted Mike Waring as the rough-and-ready nemesis of crime. And the Saint stars Vincent Price as Simon Templer, the suave sleuth who is equally adept at romance or solving a baffling murder. Hear both these fine shows tomorrow. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell with Herb Butterfield as the commissioner, is written by Bob Reif and Adrian Jando, with music by Robert Armbruster, and is produced and directed by Bill Karn. Others in the cast were Paul Fries, Shep Mencken, Stacey Harris, Gene Bates, Tim Graham, and Don Diamond. Now, a special announcement. Dangerous Assignment moves to Friday, so join us again this coming Friday at this same time when Brian Donlevy, starring in the role of Steve Mitchell, will embark on another Dangerous Assignment. <laughs> The death toll on America's highways has surpassed the total of any single war. Primary causes are speed, carelessness, and lack of courtesy. A good rule to follow is that of America's friendly truck drivers. Consideration and courtesy to all motorists. Remember, the life you save may be your own. Dangerous Assignment came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Welcome back. Well, kind of the opposite of Radio Free Europe. As an American citizen going overseas to record broadcasts for the nation's enemies, it's never a good career move. Steve really needed to rethink letting his prisoner drive. I mean, particularly being Steve Mitchell, because Steve knows how he would react in this situation, and his prisoner reacted pretty much the same way. Steve seems to have been banking on his prisoner being one of those people who kind of panics and gets a bit nervous with a gun pointed at them. But no such luck here, particularly facing a potential treason charge. Well, now we turn to listener comments and feedback, and we're going over to Instagram. And this was a comment on a Dangerous Assignment video theater episode, but it's certainly relevant to the radio program. The show those guys writes, does he instantly blow his cover by providing someone with his credentials the moment uh, they ask who he is. Uh, this is an interesting point. Now, I do think there are some people in fiction who are supposed to have, like, secret identities and are very frivolous about it and about who they disclose it to and about who they talk about it around. In modern parlance, of course, I am thinking of The Flash from the late CW TV series. I've lost count at how many times the character of Barry Allen, a.k.a. The Flash, has revealed his secret identity. And most of the time, it is not to someone who has a reasonable need to know. I think that in many ways, it's like uh, pushing back against the tradition of superheroes hiding identities from people who... Uh, care about them, and who have some real place in their life and should, in a healthy relationship, no, but to the point where you tell people who just, it's like, why did you just tell this person? This person is not going to be back in the series. And of course, in the more golden age uh, sense, you have... Uh, Clark Kent on the Adventures of Superman radio show constantly say things that if anyone picked up on them would lead them to conclude that he was Superman. And he's only able to move on through the magic of this phrase. And, and this has to be one of Radio Superman's powers. He says, never mind that now. And is instantly able to get Everyone talking about something else. I mean, for, forget speed, invisibility, strength. I want the power of never mind that now. 
all of that to say, I don't think Steve Mitchell is in that class at all. I think he generally handles things pretty well. He is not always operating undercover. Oftentimes, he is operating in cooperation with local governments. He is visiting friendly foreign powers. So even if he hasn't given his identity to authorities in advance, the fact that he's a U.S. agent is going to make his job go a lot uh, more smoothly. In addition, Steve discloses this when he thinks that he has figured out who he can trust. And usually, not always, but usually he's right on that count. But even if he's wrong about being able to trust the person, uh, if he's made that conclusion and it's going to be best for his uh, case to be out in the open, then he'll proceed in that manner. So I think Steve actually makes pretty consistently uh, prudent decisions when it comes to uh, disclosing that he's an agent of the United States government. And where he's going to be very careful about that is if he's in situations, say, where a spy is amongst some private parties and he's not sure who to trust, or if he's in a, you know, verifiably neutral place like Switzerland where it's not going to do him any good, or if he's somewhere that where they are hostile to the U.S. interest and he's only able to operate because he's pretending to be a reporter. So while you can knock Steve's judgment on some points, I don't think you can knock it too much on uh, disclosing or not disclosing his identity. I think he's got that uh, down pat. Well, now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Brian, Patreon supporter since May of 2020, currently supporting the program at the detective sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Brian. And that will actually do it for today. If you are enjoying this podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. If you are enjoying this on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and mark the notification bell. We'll be back next Wednesday with another episode of Dangerous Assignment. And then a week from Saturday, we will be bringing you Crime Fighters. But join us back here tomorrow for Follow Vance, where... Thank you. Hello, officer. I'm District Attorney Markham. Oh, I, I recognize Miss Markham. I'm Riley, 23rd Precinct. I found the body. Yes, I know. I see it hasn't been removed. I'm waiting for the men from the morgue now, Mr. Markham. While we're waiting, is it all right for me to examine the body? Go ahead, Vance. It's all right, Riley. He's Philo Vance. Oh, oh, Vance is it. Go, go right ahead, Mr. Vance. Thank you. I don't think I'll be more than a few moments. Right, Vance. Officer. Oh, yes, sir. Your report said the dead man lived at a very cheap hotel down in this section. Yet, when you found him, he was wearing evening clothes. That it did, Mr. Markham. And don't ask me to explain it, because I can't. You won't have to, officer, but I think I can. What was that? Vance, you took one look at the body, and you can explain why a down-and-out individual would be wearing a dress suit. Not only that, but I think I have an idea where I can start looking for the killer of our friend Boxcar Charlie. Now, Vance, I've seen you do astounding things, but never anything like this. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.